Just doing a initial look at each hive. You can see the last hive here. Not too much activity. We'll take a look at that one in a sec. Buddy Swarm, nice activity. Hive number two down there. Always been pretty busy with bees. And now my latest concern is hive number one. Just cause it's been a while since the last inspection. They were looking pretty light as far as brood and everything. I always start with number one, so we'll get into that one first, but just a quick assessment from looking at the landing board. Not too many bees coming and going, so we'll see, we'll see how it's looking. And then this one here, between the jars, pretty nice activity. I'm sure that one's gonna be strong. So, all right, I'll get set up do my usual intro and then we'll get into the hives as you can see the weather isn't that great it's in the mid 70s it feels awesome even though the humidity is pretty high between like 85 and 90 something percent it doesn't feel like it but overcast and if you look back in a few videos or a few videos ago the last time it was overcast I had trouble getting my smoker lit and I don't know well you can see all the stains there but the bees were going at me so if I have trouble with my smoker today and if the bees are angry as much as I want to do a full inspection of each hive I might just call it quits uh, and just see how they're doing as fast as possible worst case scenario if I can't do a full inspection I will be providing a few scoops I haven't decided yet maybe anywhere from two to four on top of the inner cover, inside the telescoping cover of some Man Lake Ultra B. So at first I thought this pollen didn't work all that great because the bees were just not really drawn to it. Uh, however, if you look at a video I posted yesterday, I put four scoops of the pollen supplement, or substitute, same thing I guess, into, I believe it's an inch and a half or two inch PVC pipe. I bought like a four foot pipe, cut it in half, so each section is about 24 inches or so. Put a few scoops in there, rested them on the bird bath, which has become basically an excellent water source for the bees. And within about five days, within a working week or so, um, they are on it. Super cool video, shot it with my iPhone 6S. I am kind of out of date, all in slow mo. So, pretty cool video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's on our YouTube page. So, enough of me yapping. I'm going to get into the hives. This turned into the full intro. Uh, let's see, got a few notes, which basically has to do with timelines. I already talked about the temperature and everything. It's August 25th, which will be on the video anyway. But the main point is it has been practically a full month since the last inspection. The last inspection was on July 25th, so four days short, give or take, of a full month. I added the supers. Not that I am expecting to see too much activity as far as them drawing out wax and everything because nothing's really blooming right now. But I added the supers with the concept that they will start to use that as the brood chamber. Most likely I will see the biggest change in brand new supers next spring as the uh, honey flow, the nectar flow starts and they can draw them out a lot faster. I do have division board feeders in most of the hives. Not this one, obviously. That's why I got the jars out front. Uh, since it's been a month, I have no doubt that this, uh, the division board feeders are empty. I didn't make any syrup, so I'll have to do that this week. And if we take a look over here, I never know what's going to come up on camera, but if you can see that about hmm, 10 feet away, that purple flower, the one right above it, the one with some blooms on top. So that's the goldenrod. So the goldenrod is trying to bloom. I'm looking around to see if we have any more close by in the bee yard, which I don't see. But anyway, the goldenrod is starting to bloom here in eastern North Carolina, here in Jacksonville. Hasn't bloomed just yet. Usually around October from what I can remember. It's in full bloom to where you'll see the bees on it, which is why I'm gonna provide them with some uh, pollen substitute today. So, it's been about five minutes of me yapping, enough of that. Let's get set up, pop the top on hive number one and see how they're looking. All right, that took a 
few minutes, probably the better part of 10 or so. But for any new beekeepers watching this, been doing this for a few years, by no means am I an expert at all. However, I've learned a few things over the last few seasons, right? And every time you come out to the bees. If you take your time and really get your smoker lit, it should result in a rather pleasant time with your bees in the event that they are a little bit angry. So, as you can see, I would say that's a pretty well lit smoker and it is packed in there quite well with all natural fuel that I can find all around me. All right, so let's get into hive number one and see how they're doing. Got some bees hanging out on top of the inner cover, which is good because like I said in my intro, I plan on dropping a few scoops of the Ultra B B or Ultra B pollen substitute in there in the event that they're not finding the pollen that I have out over in the backyard. By no means a scientific way of seeing how heavy your hives are, but some people say, you know, if you lift up the back, it's an easy way, no tools required. It's an easy way to gauge how much they've, uh, well, how heavy the hive is. In perspective to hive number two that's behind the camera, this hive is, it's on the light side. So, let's smoke them down, because nobody likes angry bees. And listen, listen to this. That is what a month in between inspections can sound like. All right, so I have the camera on the, I think it's the Joby or something, something like that. Um, that didn't sound good. The grow pod wrapped around the hive stand, so it's not as mobile right now. Otherwise, I would show you what is going on in the Super which ain't much. So we got some bees in there, but as far as them doing anything with it, drawing it out, not really. My feelings aren't hurt because that's pretty much what I was expecting. So here we go. This little smoke goes a long way. And let's see if we can frames loose. They definitely made good use of the sugar water because the frames are really stuck together. They'll use some of the sugar water along with some tree resin to make propolis. Stop frying things so much. Propolis, otherwise known as bee glue. That's how they seal up any cracks and crevices in a hive. So this is going to be, for the most part, a quick inspection. That's a nice looking frame if they would use it. I'm just looking for overall colony health, just making sure the queen's still laying some eggs. The brood patterns will start to shrink for the most part because after the summer solstice they're preparing for winter. And then around Christmas, whenever the winter solstice is, fun factor, bee tip, the queen starts ramping up, ramping up egg production in preparation for the spring. This colony, I mean, I know it's only, it's late August, but this colony might, just judging by the first three frames, not having any brood or anything, I might end up reducing this colony down to a single for winter. Here's our first look at some brood. And you know what? Before I get too busy, I always forget. Let me get my flashlight.
As mentioned on previous videos, super cheap little flashlight, but this thing to see eggs in dark dark cells is super handy. I may have seen one or two surrounding the brew pattern, which is some spun larva, but I didn't see enough to call to make the call that this colony has a queen. So, what do you do? Just check the next frame. And the only reason I'm doing that, looking for eggs, is it's a faster method to determine whether a hive is queen right than actually trying to find the queen. So a lot of brood, some spun larva in between that hasn't been capped yet, so within 10 days. But surprisingly, surrounding the brood, it's hard to see if there's any eggs. So this might be better because there's cap brood here, more spun larva, and super spun larva, which just started to spin a few days ago, and it looks like they're sitting in some milky substance, which is their food. So that's good to see that they're getting food. But finding an egg, given that it's overcast as well, is sometimes pretty difficult. But, I imagine we might have some better luck on the next frame. So here's something to pay attention to if you're kind of a new beekeeper and all. So the sun rises in the east and it hits the, as I'm standing behind the hive, it hits the left side of the hive first. And what I've noticed over the last few seasons is this half of the hive usually has the stronger brood pattern, which has proven to be the case right now. So the first few frames I pulled out, absolutely nothing as I got to the halfway point and move more to the left so frames uh, it's a nine frame right now because the feeder but frames like five through ten start to I start to see more brood So for instance, this frame has visibly more brood than the last frame. And we have eggs right here. Very easy to spot on this one. So they're still queen right. Not as much brood as, you know, during the spring, which is the expectation. And there's the queen. Just saw her and I just lost her, but I'm not going to move the frame off the hive because if you look back at a previous video, I did that, queen's right there. I did that to show the camera and I lost the queen. However, as I say that, I wanna do it anyway. So I guess I just don't learn. So there's the queen right there. Let's move back slowly. Let's see if I can one hand this. Let's find the queen again. Nope, not even worth risking it. I was going to try and hold the frame by one hand so I can show you the queen. But let's just put her back. Let her do her thing. Move all the frames back.
So that was frame 10, 9, 8. So frame 8 had signs of eggs and 100% 100, 100 confirmation that the queen was there because I saw her. Alright, a few bees got stingers stuck in my glove, which is a occupational hazard. And that's that. An inspection can be that fast. I don't know how much I s talked in the beginning, but the camera's been rolling for 11 minutes. All right, so like I was saying in the intro, damn it, <laughs> hold on. Drop the scoop. Just gonna give them some direct pollen. So that's what four scoops of pollen looks like. Doesn't seem like a lot, but considering it doesn't take much per bee, that is a healthy dose of pollen. And I'm gonna take a quick photo. All right, so that's that for hive number one. Get my glove back on, put the lid back on, and we'll move over to hive number two. I was pretty reluctant to come out today just because I have quite a few other things I'm trying to do. And with it being overcast from a previous previous experience, it wasn't, uh, wasn't necessarily that fun. But, nonetheless, here I am, out on the bees, and like usual, so far it's pretty enjoyable. Alright, so I'm going to turn the camera off for a second, move the camera around, so we can uh, get into hive number two. Alright, all set up, let's get into hive number two, listen to that sound of propolis build up over a month. Ah, that was disappointing. Oh, you know what? I always forget to do this, which is probably why the bees get angry at me sometimes. They just kind of jump in, but smoke them down a little. A little. Check this out. That is a welded smoker. Yeah, the weather over the last few years has been real weird. Last winter, it was... Uh, very mild. I mean, we had snow usually in March, but last winter the hives consumed 40 plus pounds of hard candy. Year before they only consumed 15 pounds, and the reason they consumed so much more, I believe, was because the winter kept fluctuating from below freezing temperatures to where the colony, you know, is pretty cooped up. They're not they're not leaving the colony at all to days in the 70s and probably 80s I think if I remember right to where they're out flying, cleansing, here we go. I mean looking for food in December and January where you know obviously there there isn't any food sources. So we'll see how this winter goes. Which brings me oh, which brings me to the topic or subject of how people prepare their colonies for the winter. So you don't see any out here just yet because they're not on here, but I need to make two or three more candy boards. I 
Yep, here we go. Look at that. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Oh well. I haven't made, I don't think I made a video, any kind of tutorial, any kind of, you know, how-to video on making a candy board. Super easy. I might do that this year since I have to make some. And our subscribers have grown significantly over this last year, which I appreciate it. That reminds me, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell for notifications. I don't come out here too often, obviously about once a month at this point. But, uh, yeah, maybe I'll make a how-to video because somebody else threw one of the social media platforms was asking how do I make the candy boards and they're pretty easy I found a found some directions online and if I can do it not being a woodworker anybody can do it so I've come to like these division board feeders although they do make it rather difficult to get going get the first frame out as you can see it's pretty tight as in very tight so this colony number two was my best honey producer last year and there was the reason or that there is the reason I was saying that they have not had sugar water none of them had in the last month and as you can see that shiny substance in the cells is nectar slash sugar water and that's what capped honey looks like up top so they still continue to do an excellent job making honey which for those of you that don't know is nectar that they cure down to less than 18 percent so if you took a refractometer and tested any of these cells most likely it will be less than 18 percent uh, moisture level but enough of me talking about that another frame look at that hopefully that's all on camera but that's about that's probably five pounds easily of honey so if they continue to store honey like this I may stop supplementing them and then as the goldenrod blooms, I might try to harvest some goldenrod honey now that we have our own extractor and everything is in-house per se. So we got some cap brood there, there's some spun larva surrounding it. Again, I'm just looking for some eggs so I can say this colony is queen right. So same thing on this side, nice pattern. So you got honey, nectar, if they had pollen, there would be pollen close by, but really just checking for eggs, which looks like there's none there. The queen's moved through within the last 10 days or so and filled those cells, which have spun or pupated into larva. And if you find yourself watching this video, I'm always looking for feedback. Please let me know if I talk too much, if my, if what I'm saying makes sense or not, or if you have more questions, if, you, if you're a beekeeper starting out, or, you know, even if you have more experience than me and you just have questions, really. Uh, so that's kind of weird. Speaking of questions, so this is strange to me. Those are bees that are pretty far along in the process, but as you can see, they have the head and eyes, and they're not capped, which typically they would be capped. So I say that's strange because, well, they should be capped and they're not. dry people say dry it's an empty queen cell some more. all right well that's weird that's frame what one two three four five so right in the middle Let's see what the next one looks like there's not too much brood on the other side
So that's a trick too, if you got some bees in the way, if you just kind of lightly blow on them, they move. Yeah, there's eggs. This whole, this whole frame here is eggs. So before I use this flashlight, I would look at that frame and I would say it's empty. So, you know, you get some experience over time, just kind of comes with it, the more involved you are. So yeah, that whole frame is pretty full. And look, check this out. This side of the frame faces east, which I was saying before, what I noticed is the east side of the colonies is where the queen typically favors. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, they, they do an excellent job. Sealing these, uh, frames up before I get too handsy. Give them some smoke, keep them calm. So I'd say that's a spotty brew pattern, right? But let's take a closer look. Looks spotty, there's eggs throughout. So even though I found eggs, you know, we know the queen's in here, but it's never, it's never a bad idea just to take a look at the frames, you know, if you can, if you have the time. Look at that. I'd be jumping for joy if this was springtime. I mean, I still am, don't get me wrong. I'm still happy that they're packing away honey, but that's what you want to see in the spring. Or here around eh, mid-May to mid-June. Pull your frames late June. I do want to get in the bottom box. I don't think I'm going to pull any frames, but I just kind of want to, oh yeah, they got some weight there. I just want to look in between the frames, see how they're doing. And please, please know that is by no means a good method to inspect your hive. Same thing, just packing away honey. You know what? I'm not. I'm not going to disturb them. I know the queens in there found eggs, especially in the top brood chamber. So I'm not going to disturb them. All right. So let's put the box back on. Have one, let's get them four scoops. Direct supplementing. All 
all right so i think i'll just uh summarize summarize as i go hive number two looking good not really much to talk about packing away honey or sugar water just making good use of anything i'm supplementing them uh yeah strong hive so again, I'm going to turn the camera off, get situated, and we'll get into hive number three, which is my buddy's swarm. I moved over here at this point a while ago. I'd have to look back at the videos. I can't remember. All right, so yeah, let's get into hive number three in a second. All right, here we are, hive number three. Again, hopefully that's a good angle. Let's give them some smoke. And this might actually sound like what 30 days of propolis sound, or sounds like, yeah. Oh, just kidding. Kind of disappointing. I think it's usually the inner cover is what uh, gets that nice crackling sound. And hey, Take your time and let your smoker get out here maybe 30 something minutes, which ain't too long. But the fact that I don't have to struggle with it and try and relight it or anything, it's a win in my book. All right, let's see how we can do this. Here, which is kind of where I need to put the inner out of it. And it becomes a balancing act. Alright, here we go. Listen to this. Not really. Not the best. However, something I noticed in this colony right away is they are actually. This was a brand new super. This is exciting. This colony is making use of the super. So hey, any anybody else watching this? The reason I added these is to get a jump start on next year. Some hives, some hives are doing it, some aren't. But this one, as we'll see in a second. So outer frames, usually not a lot of activity. But check this out. This is fantastic. So this is what I'm saying, you know, for anybody that knows or doesn't know, that's a brand new, uh, new frame, new foundation. The foundation is what they build their colony on, but check that out. They are drawing this out, which is exactly what I want it to happen in the meantime, between now and the spring. So I can store these. I'll either store them or leave them on the colonies, but check that out. This colony is strong. So the name of the game is spring preparation. If you can go into spring with supers already having established um, a wax, well, already establishing wax to where as soon as the nectar starts flowing, all the bees have to do is fill the wax with honey. I mean, you are so far ahead of everybody else. And check this out, this is why they're, oh, I just bumped the camera with my veil. This is why they're drawing this wax out so fast, because they need the space. It's a single deep. And as you can see, I know the camera picks this up, all those little white specks in the cells, which is extremely easy to see with new wax on black foundation, those are eggs. So this colony, when I say colony, I really mean the queen, is extremely strong. Well, it's a, com it's a combined effort. I think I talk too much as well. It's a combined effort. You know, the queen can't lay eggs if she doesn't have space to do so. Space being the cells, the hexagon. So the colony builds it out as much as possible, depending on if they have a good food source or not. And you know what else I just thought of that I experienced last year? This division board feeder, I put them all in the same spot, is on the very far right of the hive. So in frame number one spot, and the frames with the most wax drawn out, eh, for the most part, 
are right over the division board feeder. I noticed this last year with a nuke. I believe it was a nuke. I put a division board feeder in the nuke and the frame, the two frames directly above it, were drawn out super fast. It's a matter of efficiency, you know? Would you want to walk further or shorter to do something? Bees are the same. The less distance they have to travel to build wax to draw out Man, this is fantastic. And every single one has eggs. I may just add, I may add one of the supers to this. So they'll have two, shoot, I might grab another brand new super. Yeah, they are drawn out because the queen needs space to lay eggs. So this was actually a good choice, a good decision. They haven't got down here yet, but yeah, that looks, that looks absolutely fantastic. So there's eggs in a few of those frames, which means they're less than three days old. So in the next, let's see, in the next two weeks, this colony's population should be noticeably more, which also makes me glad um, supplementing them or uh, pollen, sorry. All right, so you know what? We got, I'm talking too much, not thinking. So we got eggs up in the super. There is absolutely no reason to even get into the colony. So that saved me some time too, which is always appreciated. All right, so just like the other, just like the other colonies, let's get them some pollen because they definitely need it. They have eggs, a lot of eggs too. Kind of curious to see if I get any comments on this video because I've one well for starters I've never I've never put pollen on top of the um, inner cover like this before. I haven't really supplemented pollen too much either, but from what I've noticed that other people say is it, it attracts small hive beetles, which luckily I really haven't had a problem with those at all in this bee yard. But, you know, we'll see. Hopefully I'm not introducing problems to the colonies. I don't think I am. Each one's relatively strong. And I think they'll get on that pollen real fast and start using it up. So as long as you have a, excuse me, as long as you have a strong colony, it keeps all the pests away. Uh, let's see. So I need to get set up to look at high four. I'm trying to think how I'll do that. So I'm going to turn the camera off for a sec, get set up, and then we'll take a look at hive number four. All right, well, it didn't take too long. I just got the camera sitting on top high. What are we on, three? Yeah. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Uh, get all set up here. So I'm trying to think. Okay, so this is the swarm I caught on the corner of the property. Don't want to give you a time frame because I can't remember, but I think it was like late May or June or something. And, I mean, they were... It was a it was a pretty strong swarm. Let me take the feeders off. I don't need this right now. But I will supplement them some more. Alright, let's get that out of the way. So this was something weird I noticed last time I was out here. Looks like some death occurred. In the form of a bird of some sort. It's a bunch of feathers on top and it, it looks like the bird may have just flown right into the uh, right into the brick. Alright so yeah I'm just gonna smoke them. And there is like no hopeless to that. Which is fine. It's not the uh end of the world if they don't have it sealed up tightly. Just give them a little smoke. That is a nice smoker, as you can tell. I'm super happy with not having to screw with the smoker the entire time I'm out here. Alright, so kind of like, kind of like that colony. Not... Not 
not much of anything going on in the super. See? Not much. Which is fine. I mean, it's kind of the expectation. Slide that over just a little. So double deep. Let's see what we got. A little weight to it. Storing some uh, some nectar. Let me move the camera just a little closer. So if I recall correctly, I checkerboarded this colony with brand new frames. And let's face it down a little. So it's like old, new, old, new. And you can kind of tell still. That's a new frame. That's a new frame. It's been a while. I can't exactly remember, so don't hold that against me. Got some bees on it, but yeah, they're storing nectar. So that's good. You always want to see them uh, doing something. So, new frame. They started to draw it out, but probably just due to lack of food, really. Either supplementing sugar water or natural food source just not much of it so it just kind of makes sense why you know there's not really that much drawn wax on the newer newer frames I mean these are some calm bees it's like they don't even they don't even pay much attention that you're here all right so let's see you know, if, if this were a month from now, I don't know, it's hard, it's hard to say. Because bees move up in the winter because heat rises, so they move up. But there's really not a lot of activity going on in the top box, which is not a big deal at this point. As you, as you approach winter more, that's when you really have to give it some thought about what kind of decision you're gonna make now this box looks really good so the camera's not hunkered down to the hive stand we can take a look I mean that's what you want to see look how fat that frame is you can see they're joining the frames with wax that's a new frame which doesn't really look like they've done a lot to but right now these are some extremely calm bees which makes inspecting them pleasant. All right, let's take a look at a few of these frames, see what we can determine. Just rip that apart because that's how much propolis they have. Propolis is a good thing, but it also makes inspecting sometimes difficult. Especially if you got some older frames, which I can tell this one is. I've tried to repair it a few times. Because it has a, uh, it's got a crooked nail <laughs> in it. So, very unlike me to jump to frame three, but trying to get a frame out to get myself some space. Weird, uh, oh wow. Well, this is, uh, this is kind of a, <laughs> a little bit of a conundrum. No kidding, developed queen cell. So that makes sense. They may have swarmed not that long ago. So now, that I know a few things because I think I split a queenless hive earlier this year not knowing better so now that I see a fully developed queen cell I want to I really want to check for eggs because this hive was booming there was a ton of activity 
uh, about a month ago. I look back on that video and it does look different now. It's amazing that you can you can visually tell the difference when you have a hive that's booming with bees and when you get back in a hive and there's not too many bees. So I'm looking for a few things. I'm always checking for eggs, especially now that I found a fully developed queen cell that's probably gonna hatch in the near future. And then at the same time, because it's been a month since I've been out here, which doesn't really make sense why they would swarm because they have plenty of space. That top box is empty. Um, I'm also checking to see, and I don't think this would happen within a month, but I'm checking to see if a laying worker has developed. So for those of you that don't know, the queen of a colony emits a pheromone that keeps the rest of the female bees from laying eggs. But once you have a swarm and the queen is gone, and along with that, her pheromone dissipates, a hive can develop a laying worker, which produces only drones, boy bees, or starts depositing more than one egg in a cell, which basically causes nothing but problems because boy bees don't do anything, drones don't do anything. I know, it's kind of funny to say. They just hang out in the hive until it's time to mate. abundance of bees. I mean, there's a decent amount of bees in here. By no means is it considered, I would consider it weak. But finding a queen cell, for me at least, always throws a doubt in my mind whether the hive is queen right. Easiest way to determine? find eggs because the chance of finding the queen even though I did that today once or twice I think once uh, usually well reflecting back on me as a new beekeeper year one and two finding the queen usually just wastes so much time trying to do that it's like literally finding a needle in a haystack there's like a quarter million bees in a healthy colony and you're looking for one even though she's bigger doesn't necessarily stand out. All right, so I'm gonna look at the busiest frame here, this one, one more time. And if I don't see any eggs, I'm gonna say this hive, oh man, are you serious? I'm gonna say this hive is queenless, which makes sense. Huh. Great. Well, you gotta look at that later. Oh, so I just broke. Fell off and landed on one of the bricks. Alright, well, I'm gonna leave well enough alone. I'm gonna say that this hive is queenless. I'm not gonna mess with that queen cell. This was number three. So they have pretty good stores in here with how fat some of those frames are with honey. But only one queen cell, man. Hopefully... So here's where things get tricky. Now you gotta hope that one queen hatches, mates, returns, and continues to build up the colony. So we'll see. I'll keep an eye on this one. Uh, I'm not going to supplement them pollen because I think it would be a waste if this colony ends up not pulling through. So as much as, as, much as you never really want to lose a colony, here's the, I'm going to take this super off actually and put it on hive three. Uh, let's see, I'm going to give them two more weeks to really fill that and then I'll, and then I'll switch it around. So you never really want to lose a colony, but here's the 
I guess here's the plus side to this one. It was a swarm I caught, so didn't necessarily cost me anything per se, other than some time inspecting it and some sugar water, which is like pennies to the dollar. So yeah, hive four, I'm gonna say is queenless right now, has a queen cell in the bottom box on frame three or four, and that's just something to keep an eye on. All right, so turn the camera off, get it all set up, take a look at high five and wrap things up today. Okay, over at hive number five, I'm gonna set this aside to take this piece. Just knock something loose, I don't know. And come on, smoker. Just got, got some left. Got some life in you. Failing me now. Alright, last last colony. Decent amount of bees up top. Not that that means anything at all, but let's take a look. Kind of run out of room sometimes where to, where to put stuff. All right, so camera and the tripod are secured to the hive stand, so I can't necessarily move it around. There we go. And man, I wish I had more colonies like number three that have really started to build up in the super. This one, not doing much of anything, so. That's fine. Can't win them all, right? All right. Let's see how this colony's doing. If they have a queen, I'd be happy. I'm trying to remember this colony's history and nothing really comes to mind. There's a... There's a few beekeepers down south in Louisiana that they do something pretty neat that I might I might start doing next year. They simply write their notes on the outer cover. I don't know how that works over a long period of time, if it can be cleaned off or not or whatnot so you can start over, but that definitely wouldn't be the worst thing to do. So you come out and you have, I was gonna move the camera, but it's okay. You got your notes right there on the lid. All right, so like usual, just checking for uh, just checking for eggs. So this was, I believe this was another swarm, and within a few weeks, if I look back on my history, they built up. I mean, there was like a dozen queen cells. So I tried my hand at making a split by moving just like one of the frames. There was two frames. One had a dozen or so and another had like four or five. Moving the frame with five, five queen cells into a separate box. And it looked like the queen hatched, but she may not have returned. So that colony, I believe, yeah, that's, that's right. That sounds right. That colony I stacked or combined on Hive 4, the one we were just looking at. All right, well, there's not too many of these in here. Some empty queen cells. So let's keep on looking. Some nectar, which is, you know, great, but Nothing to get excited about. You really want to see brood. And I hate the fact that the flashlight broke on me. Just 
kind of thinking if this one is queenless as well, what I can do, easiest thing to do is combine them. Wow, that is weird. That, I don't know if it's going to come up on camera because it's moving a lot. But look at that bee. I just lost it. Super dark, like almost black. I mean, it stood out. Uh, not looking good. This one might be queenless too. That's strange this time of year. I mean, strange for me at least. Yeah. I'm starting to think that. I'm starting to think this one might be queenless as well. So, new queen here. New queen there. That hive. Three is very strong. Uh, two is very strong. Hmm. Let's take a look at that flashlight again. Just wish this thing would work. There we go. Ah, how about that? banging around. Alright, let's take a closer look. Ah, what the world. Yeah. New there. And this was a swarm too, so I mean it's like as much as you want to roll in the spring. As much as you want to roll into spring with healthy hives, like multiple hives, you know, we're not big production at all, so a few hives get the job done as far as making excess honey to have some on hand and, and sell some. But, it just kind of gets frustrating when you have to start over. I don't know. It's weird. I may have, may have swarmed as well. I mean, these frames, they're not old, so it's not too difficult to check them. But, just trying to think what to do. So, let's see, this is a single Yeah, you know what? I don't come out here too often anymore, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna end up combining Hive 5, I believe, with Hive 3, which is super strong. And I don't wanna mess up uh, what Hive 3 has going on. That's the Hive that is making great use of the Honey Super. They're drawing it out and everything. So what I'm gonna do with this one to prevent too many losses is combined it with Hive 3 by simply adding this box on top of the Honey Super. Hive 4, the one that's right behind the camera, has a queen cell. So I'm going to just give that some time and see how it plays out. But yeah, this one for sure, I'm going to combine with Hive number 3. And I'm going to do that right now. Alright, for those of you that have never combined a Hive, not much rocket science to it. It's as, uh, as simple as it sounds, really. So, just trying to find some room. Just move some things around. So it does make sense that uh, that hive, the last one, five, was, uh, I mean, had a lot of activity not that long ago and doesn't look like it has that much activity now. So I'm just gonna simply add that deep on top of the super gear.
which should give this queen, who is very strong, should give this queen plenty of space to expand. All right, add the lid. Add the outer lid. All the day. And that is how easy it is to combine a hive. And you know what? As I say that, there's a bunch of bees over there on the bottom board. So I'm just going to bang them on top of this and then uh, we'll be done. Welcome to your new home. Alright. And now we're done. So not too terrible of, a, of an inspection. Hive 1 is looking alright. Hive 2 is strong like usual. Hive 3 a lot stronger than I expected. Especially with how much progress they've made in not only drawing out the brand new super, but also the, with the queen um, expanding the colony and filling a lot of those cells with eggs. So I expect that to continue and then I expect within the next month or so to see frames in the deep that I just added fill up with eggs. <laughs> Swarms are usually pretty strong, and that, that seems to be the case with this one as well. So now I have a super over there that I have to bring back to the house, I guess. Um, it's kind of the problem that arises. It's not really a problem, but it's just more annoying, really, given the location of the bee yard, and it's not easy to get in and out here with equipment, is when you have equipment that needs to go back with you. So we'll figure that out. But anyway, try not to be too long-winded. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. Cole's Farm right here in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Just some backyard beekeepers with, well, fluctuates anywhere from one to six hives. I think the most I had out here was seven. So one to seven hives. And currently we're down to four, potentially down to three, depending on how hive number four fares over the next few weeks. If that queen hatches, mates, returns, excuse me, and starts laying eggs but one two and three looking great four tbd five no longer no longer exists because it got combined with hive number three so probably expect let's see probably expect a late august and then a late september inspection somewhere in the meantime i plan on making some candy boards probably make a how-to folks how easy it is and how cost effective it is to make your own equipment sometimes i mean these candy boards i haven't priced it out exactly but each one is well less than five dollars like it is worth your time to make one of these boards it's kind of an insurance policy for winter so i'm not going to talk about that too much more now just because i plan on making a video on how to do it anyway so that's it thanks for watching everybody late august inspection Check us out on Instagram, same name, Coles Farm NC, and Facebook. You can find us there. We do have some um, some of our honey left over, or still available for sale from uh, spring. Absolutely delicious. First come, first serve. Message us on Facebook. Local pickup only. We're trying to work out the details as far as shipping goes. Kind of complicated because I I like to bottle mine in the traditional mason jars. However, when it comes to shipping, now you're talking about glass, it does have some significant weight to it. Uh, priced it out to ship to Washington State, because we do have somebody up there that's interested. It's about $25 for shipping. So, more than most folks are willing to pay, I would imagine. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll be very excited about that. But we're trying to work out some details with shipping to make it more uh, cost effective for our buyers. So, you're not spending 25 bucks. For shipping for a pound and a half of honey but it is delicious so i digress if you're around jacksonville come on by pick some up uh you know share the experience and as north carolina state beekeepers association says taste the goodness all right hey thanks for watching everybody this video will be up later on and i'll give it about three weeks or so late uh it is august late september 
and I'll be out here again. All right, thanks for watching. Cole's Farm, Jacksonville, North Carolina.